you see that raising children isn't very hard to do if you only take it easy like the woman in the show. <laughs> Well, video viewers, that's as far as I can go, and then I get a blank. Uh, we have with us the owner of Musicade. I know, I was and doing we're gonna it ask before. Him a few questions. Mr. Todd Lauren. Now, Todd, first of all, how did you get started in this business? And perhaps you could also say why. Or something like that. Go ahead, Jeff. Three, two. That, that countdown hurts. That, 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 that screws me up. One, two, <laughs> I was about 15 or 16. I put on a comic book collector's convention as a way to keep from having to concentrate on other boring things like schoolwork and that type of thing. And uh, I wasn't really too thrilled with Southfield High back in Michigan. It was a very boring place. And then, then it came to the decision of, will I go to college or won't I? If I went to college, I could be a dentist or a doctor or one of those things. And if I stayed with this business venture of mine, which at that time was comic book and record collectors conventions, I could perhaps keep from having to go to college, which frankly was quite boring for me. I didn't really like the idea of school in general, particularly college, which was kind of like a whole career of school. On my way to San Diego, at which point I decided this would be kind of a nice place to live, but I couldn't really move there since I had all these conventions going on in the Midwest and the East Coast. I was finally just making enough money. The, the catalog was being mimeographed on this type of paper at the time, just at a zip printer and uh, out of my basement of a home in Oak Park, Michigan and uh, I was just doing all the work myself and I finally was making enough to uh, stop doing these silly conventions so I packed up everything and moved to San Diego, a place I always wanted to live and uh, well, then one thing led to another and uh, here we are. My, I decided it was going to be the world's greatest rock and roll catalog. That was my goal, to take uh, everything that you could possibly get, all the different suppliers, there's a couple dozen of them who have rock and roll memorabilia, and cram all their stuff into one place, and it would just be the one place where you could find everything, and ultimately that has become what we have done. They said it couldn't be done, but that's what we have done. with me as a special guest, a uh, known expert on rock and roll collectibles, Mr. Ed Finn, who has written this book. Show him your book uh, there, Ed. Oh, yeah. That's you. <laughs> the Monkey's Scrapbook. Now, uh, this is n available at B. Dalton's and other well-known places. Here, you can hold it up a little bit longer if you'd like. Okay. Now, uh, Ed, tell me, uh, if you'd like, why, uh, why, why would somebody want to have that particular book that you just threw on the floor there? No reason. If you, um, the monkey scrapbook, if you take the S out of it, it gives a whole new meaning to the book. I see. And perhaps a, a more honest one? Well, it has interesting monkey facts in it. It was just a book we did real fast. I see. Uh, so Want to know where the real money is, Todd? Yeah. The real money is in collectibles. Like uh, scrap but isn't it possible that the monkey Scrapbook will become a collectible, or well, is it yeah, collectible? Yeah, yeah. Or... Well, yeah. What, what is the, what, what, what's You have the, to buy that what, now. Just, just, just. What is the difference between a collectible and a collector's item? Uh, Every time you turn on the letters. TV, somebody is saying, "Buy this now. It's a limited it. collector's item." Every single time. There's chess sets. There's little things. All kinds of bizarre things. They're all collector's items. Are they really collectors? Well, in the mind of the beholder, unless the mind has a book in front of them that says something is worth something. Uh, you start collecting something and someday you have a few more people that want that item and it becomes a collectible. And it's supply and demand. They want it, you have it, they pay more money now, for it. Now, now, just wait a moment. 
if I may interject one thing here. Uh, wouldn't that the uh, anything could be a collectible? I mean, isn't that true? If if it's like produced, mass produced, or just made, like a, a cereal box can be a collectible, can it? Yes. Um, and can a cereal box produced? also be a collector's item? It's worth money. Yeah. If something is currently being made right now, and it's still being made, that is a collectible. But if it's no longer being made, and there's a limited, finite number of them, then that's a collector's item? Uh, that's certainly a correct avenue. But what if that item is no longer being made, okay, there's a finite number of them available, but nobody wants them. Is it still a collector's item if there's no demand, but there's, there's limited supply, but there's no demand? Uh, right. Not this time. But later on, mm -hmm. that all changes. So it's got to be a combination of both limited supply and, and high demand in order to make an item a collector's item. Is that pretty much the size of it? That's um, that's true. Mm -hmm. Now, what if um, what what if just just answer this one thing, okay? And don't try and get it around. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Most part. Finally, I get a straight answer. Now, so where where is the um, the future of rock and roll collectibles? Is the set is the CD going to be something that'll be valuable, or uh, what about the uh, vast array of rock and roll t-shirts and posters and that type of thing, patches, buttons. How can you tell the real thing from the, uh, from the uh, bootleg, shall we say? And uh, how can you, uh, and is there a difference in the value between the licensed and the uh, non-licensed items? Uh, yes, the licensed items are usually better investment, though bootleg items are uh, desirable after a certain amount of time. Uh -huh. Well, aren't uh, bootleg records uh, worth just as much, if not more, as uh, licensed records, if you can find them? Usually because they are such a limited distribution. Mm -hmm. So if you have a bootleg album and it has a rare soundtrack on it, it's going to be worth more than a regular released album, unless that was the first pressing of the released album. Mm -hmm. so. so there's all these factors to consider in collecting. There's this... Yeah. Supply, demand, quality, uh, licensed, whether it's licensed or not, uh, popularity, uh, personal preference, all these things enter into it. These are um, many things to consider. Mm -hmm. It's your money and you spend it how like you want. How did, um, how did rock and roll t-shirts get their start in popularity? When did that all start? Were they popular? No. Well, when did they start becoming popular? Yes. Well just after everybody wanted to start wearing what they liked. There's mm, no that? there's no big peer pressure on what you wear now unless you uh, have to wear a suit or a, or a business environment. So in other words, nowadays expression people of what are you like. more into expressing what they like. Um, it's like... Um, well, you have a shirt on and you people are going to come up to you and they're going to talk to you about, hey, I like this person. Yeah. Really and yeah. It's, it's, it's a form of communication you meet. You know, opposite sex, the same sex, uh, people in your own circles for collecting. It's a way to let people it's an know what you're into. advertisement too. Yeah, but but what I was getting at See, is like I, I look for people that, that eat Cheerios. Uh -huh. As a matter of fact. Well, there's a lot of them out there. Right. Every okay. morning. I've seen Paul Schaefer eating Cheerios. Right. On, on late night. Uh, but what I was getting at is, do you think that the reason? rock and roll t-shirts have become more popular is because of the fact that they help people to express their individuality and uh, the more there are, and perhaps in the future, uh, everybody will wear something different. Yep. And it'll be very rare to find anybody wearing anything the same. Uh, well, that could be that, yes, because uh, wardrobes do grow every day. So you have a choice of wearing something different every day and it's going to be different from everybody else. Mm -hmm. Do you see uh, rock and roll t-shirts ever becoming valuable collector's items in the future? Well, yes. So uh, would, would you recommend... Once again, monkey shirts and uh, sweatshirts and monkey sweatshirts too are collector's items now. Uh -huh. I think oh, what we did, we can um, clip it down. Yeah, All right, Blaine, clip it funny. down. Just don't make me look like an ass, please. <sighs> All right, let's reshoot. <laughs>